Those were the really cool teleport effects from Prism by Corridor Digital. For this tutorial, you can actually download some video from Prism and a project file on how to create those very same effects in HitFilm Ultimate. To get those files, just point your browser at hitfilm.com slash files slash teleport.zip. Once you've downloaded the file, all you need to do is right click on it and select extract all. Once it's extracted, you'll see that there's a couple of video files in there with some actual footage from Prism and there's a project file as well which you can open up in HitFilm Ultimate. If you don't have HitFilm, all you need to do is head over to hitfilm.com slash demo. So let's just get on with the tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at this transport effect from the film Prism by Corridor Digital. If you haven't checked out their YouTube channel, I really recommend that you do. They have some great tutorials there, but also pretty much the most innovative filmmaking on YouTube. There's quite a lot of different elements used in this effect. What we're going to be concentrating on is the particles and how we can build that. But if you're interested in the light flare earlier on, there's actually a couple of other tutorials we've already done which you can go and look at, which will be on your screen now. First, on the editor timeline here, we've got this final shot. That's actually a composite shot. It's up here as well. We can double click on it to look at it further. Now this comp is loaded up, you can see there's actually quite a few layers. This builds up the whole effect, and while we won't concentrate on it for this tutorial, I'll quickly take you through them just in case you've downloaded this project. At the top we have flare high, this is the light flare at the top of the screen. Below that we have a mask, which is there. And then you can see flare ground, which is the flare that goes on the ground. We then have a, a mask that's masking the particles, which is there. And then we have the particles themselves. And then behind that we have the actual video layer, and then a camera and a bunch of tracking points which we will be using later in the tutorial. If we just skip along a bit, this guy here, this is actually Jimmy Wong, who's Freddy Wong's brother. You probably all know who Freddy Wong is. Jimmy's actually a pretty big deal on YouTube as well now. He's got some wicked music videos, so check out his channel. So we're gonna be concentrating on these particles and how you might create them. You can see they're bouncing off the floor, they're moving at different speeds, and they're all coming from the same place. Well, to keep things simple, we're just gonna start with sort of an almost new project, which I've created here called Tracked Camera. Had the guys over at Corridor wanted to keep things simple, they would have actually put their camera on a tripod here and locked it off, and then taken one shot with their characters in the shot, and then another without their characters there. That would make it really easy just to match the two shots together. As it is, they've gone for something a bit more dynamic, and we actually have a camera move. And it made it quite hard to line these shots up, but it will actually help sell the effect in the end. So I've gone ahead and put those two shots into a single video for you. What I've also done is I've camera tracked the shot. Now you could use something like PF Ho, which at the moment the Pixel Farmer giving all hit film users a great 25% off. Now, as you can see, we have our camera in here, which is the camera tracked camera. We have our video in the background. And then my two camera tracked points are foreground and background. As you can see, those two points are really nicely attached to the video. There's also another point here called particle origin. And this is where my particles are going to obviously come out of. And I'm going to show you how I created that right now. So let's get rid of that one, hide it. If we go to new and select point, and then you'll see that we've got this point just sticking in the middle of the video. What we need to do is make it 3D, and then we're going to actually parent it to our original foreground point. So let's do that now. And now let's go and look at its transform settings. Now, all of these, let's just set them all to zero and to 100%. And as you'll see now, this is exactly where our original point was that's camera track. So now we just need to move this point to where we want our effect to appear. So I'm gonna use the controls down here on the timeline, and move it towards the center of the screen, somewhere about there. Let's actually go back and see where they were standing. Oh, I've gone a bit too far. Somewhere about there, and then we can move it up the screen to about where their hands are. Now, just from doing that movement, because it's actually camera tracked as well, there we go, it's sticking to our footage, fantastic, that's exactly what we want. Now all we need to do is rename it, so let's rename it New Particle Origin. You can always use the one that I've put in there before if you want. Go up to the effects panel, and under 3D you'll find the Particle Simulator. So drag one of those onto the timeline, and there we go, we have some absolutely massive looking particles. So what we want to do is make sure our particles are coming out of that origin that we've already created. So let's double click on them here, on the timeline, and the controls will come up. Then go into Emitters, Emitter, then under Shape, it says Attach to Layer, 
select our new particle origin. Now they're actually coming out of the correct place. Obviously these particles are massive, so we want to change those. So we want to go into particle systems, then particle system, and then under that we want to go to movement. And on the scale, let's just set it to 5%. So now they're much, much smaller. Now would also be a good time to change the actual texture that we're using. So let's go into appearance, then click the folder icon under textures. Included with the sample project are these three textures. So let's click on the block long texture. So now we have the texture we want, but it looks really wrong. It's all coming out sort of flat and facing the camera rather than in three dimensions. We can simply change this by switching off billboarding and switching on align to motion. Now the textures appear to actually be coming out in three dimensions. Now what we want the effect to do is actually have a burst of particles, not a continuous stream like we've got here. So first of all, let's find the frame where they actually disappear, which is here, and start our particle system just before that. Now what we need to do is dive into our particle system on the timeline, again going into emitters, then particle system, then general, and we need to look for the particles per second property. And what we're going to do is we're going to increase that quite dramatically. So let's put in two and a half thousand. Let's set it so that we're actually keyframing it. Step forward a frame, maybe two frames, and then set it to zero. What this means is that we'll initially have two and a half thousand particles coming out, and then it'll stop. So there we go. That's looking much better already. What you will notice is that the particles appear to be going through the floor which is not the effect that we want. What we need to do is go to New Layer, Plane, let's call it Floor. Now we have a 2D layer called Floor. We need to make it 3D and then parent it to our foreground camera tracked point. Yet again, we need to go into the Transform. We need to set the position back to zero and the scale back to 100. And here we can see it actually existing in our scene in three dimensions. So it's actually sticking upright rather than flat on the floor. So to change that, we need to go to the orientation and set it to 90. So now that we've got our floor, we need to tell our particle engine to use it. So let's collapse that and expand out our particle simulator. Now down here, you've got a section called deflectors. You might have to scroll down to see it. We need to select this little button here, which will add a new deflector for us. We then expand that down and then expand out the shape. Now next to shape where it says cuboid, you need to change this to layer. And then underneath source layer, you need to select our floor. If we use the infinite plane, it actually stretches this layer out into infinity. So if we put that on, you'll see that the other particles are using it as well. We can now simply go back to our floor and set it to invisible, but the particle engine will still continue to use it and give that great looking effect. The next thing that you'll notice is that the particles end rather abruptly. There, they just disappeared. So what can we do about that? Well, you could make them last for longer, which would be under the particle system, and then going to the movement and increasing the life. The other thing we can do is on the timeline, under emitters, particle system, at the bottom here you have this that says lifetime. Clicking on that brings up our lifetime graph. This is what happens to a particle from the moment that it's born until it dies. If we go to the alpha setting and then choose gradient, what we can do is move this white point all the way to the start, make a new point by clicking here at the end and make it transparent. And now, just before the particles die, they will fade out. This is also where you might change the speed of the particles over their lifetime to make them come out really fast and then almost stop, which is what we did in some of the other particle effects for Prism. So now you can see how we created the movement of the particles, we need to look at how we can make them glow. To do this, I'm gonna duplicate this comp and create a new one. So we go to our tracked camera comp, which is the one that we're in. If we right click on it and select duplicate, here's a new duplicate, it's automatically selected. Let's rename that glowing particles. And if we double click on that comp, it will open up and it will be an exact duplicate of what we had. 
But what we're going to do straight away is delete the video layer. So we just have our particles on black. Because this black is actually a transparent area, and I do really want a black background, we're going to take the black plane from our media and drop it in behind all our particles. And then we can start grading them. To create the glow, we need to create a grade layer. Inside of this, we're going to try and diffuse these particles using, well, the diffuse filter. So let's grab that and drop it on. Now, it just looks like they're faded at the moment, and what we actually want it to do is look like they're glowing. So we need to actually increase the opacity to quite high. I've got it 0.8 here, and then we can increase the radius as well. And now they look very faint. You can't really see if they're glowing or not. So what we're going to do is grab an exposure filter, and we're going to drop that on, and then we're going to boost up the exposure quite a bit. There we go. They look more like they're glowing now. It is worth mentioning at this point that if your computer is powerful enough, under the project settings and under advanced, you can select color bit depth of 16-bit float. This will increase the quality of all your grading. And in cases where you're using diffuse and then exposure, and you might get banding under 8-bit integer color, under 16-bit float you will not. So it's worth bearing in mind if you have a computer that's powerful enough. Going back to the effect, we now need to add some color. So let's select color. Let's use the color correction wheels, drop those on, and then double click them to bring up the settings. Here they are. We need to boost everything towards the blue. So we'll do a little bit on the highlights, a lot on the midtones, and a lot on the darks. There we go. We're getting something far more bluey now. Now that looks pretty good. To see what this actually looks like on our footage, we can now go back to our media. If we open up that tracked camera shot we had before, it's still got our particle system in, so we can switch that off here. And we can drag and drop on our glowing particles we've just created. Now they're on a black background, so that covers everything up. So we need to change the blend method. So we right click, go to blend, and select add. Straight away you can see our blue particles existing on top of our footage. So now all you need to do is mask out the fella in the foreground. Well, I've made it easy for you this time, just so that you can quickly play with this. And if you look in the media, you've got this file called Masked Man. If we drop him on at the top, it's all masked out for you. So you can just have some great fun with these effects. Well, there you have it. I hope this tutorial has helped you gain an understanding of how we put together all the particle systems to create the transportation effect in PRISM. Make sure you check out the other compositions in the project file, like particles composition and the final shot, to see all the different layers that were used and to get even more understanding of all the different settings and how you can put together really wicked looking effects. Make sure that you subscribe if you want to see more tutorials in the future. And if you want to play a part in actually picking what tutorials we do, head over to hitfilm.com where you can join up, tell us exactly what you want, and we'll try and put together those tutorials in the future.